The contents of this program may not necessarily represent the views of Umma Channel. Welcome back. My name is Shaquille Salam, and you're watching Umma Channel Sky 820. Uh, the health show Hamari Sehid. Every week we bring you to the host of uh, subjects uh, with uh, uh, health professionals. Today we, we have opportunity to ask Dr. Fazan Ahmed, who is a GP in Manchester, to talk to us about healthy lifestyle, new year, new beginning, what we can do to improve our health and well-being. Just sitting and talking is not the answer. We need some practical advice and this is the section where Dr. Fazan Ahmad is going to look at some key issues and some solutions and small little changes for you to make for now for your better future. This is about your health, this is about your future and this is something you can do it and you can improve your health and well-being. You feel better, you feel healthier, you feel active. How can you do that? Very simple, but it needs uh, some dedication, some um, commitment, and that is all we need from you. Take some hints from Dr. Fizan Arman and please start doing it practically. Start working on that. Have small goals, but achieve it and don't delay it, this is the time to start something new for your own benefit, for your family benefits, for your children's sake. So Dr. Fazan Ahmed, this is the last section of the programme. We discuss a variety of issues and concerns. Why we are in a position where we are now, is that because we see that we are better off, we've got money, we've got everything, we can afford things, so if we can afford it, let's enjoy it. Why should we not buy things if we can pay for it? I think you're right, and it'd be difficult to, to argue against this situation that we're in. But what I'd ask us all to do and reflect upon is that actually we're going to be the first generation that will not live as long as our parents' generation, which is completely unheard of. So our parents that have developed um, heart problems, diabetes, stroke, etc., etc., most of them will be well into their 60s, 70s. Um, we as a generation of, of Indian subcontinent Asians, we are likely and already are starting to develop these conditions much earlier on and sadly even at my practice in in Manchester we're starting to see a situation where not just people of our generation but our children are starting to develop um, health problems much earlier on it was unheard of um, that there's two types of diabetes for example the type 2 diabetes was always seen as something that developed with age um, and this is the common form of diabetes amongst our people but there are children as, as young as eight nine and ten really who've been diagnosed with that type of diabetes and if you think about what causes that type of diabetes it's purely diet and activity and what we're seeing is what's happened in those first eight, nine, ten years of that child's life to get them to that. And actually it's our parenting. It's our lack of um, interest in really what their future is. Whilst our traditional mantra has always been, you know, I, I wish for them to become a doctor, I wish for them to become a lawyer. What we forget is that actually are we going to give them their health that they need to make sure that they're successful and able to carry out that, that duty and that role for, for the wider community. And quite often we're having a situation where we've almost given them a, a disability before they start. Mm. So whilst 
it can be difficult to motivate ourselves for ourselves. I'd like to think we're a selfless community. Okay. We care about others yeah. uh, amongst ourselves. Let's we... go to Holland and Mother Bai is with us. Assalamu alaikum, Mother Bai. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Ji. Uh, thank you very much. Too. It's my pleasure to talk to you. Ji, ji. And then uh, my question is that, um, you know, I am a writer and then was I have, uh, uh, every day I uh, talk to the different channels, to international politics. And then I talk to the, my own newspaper because I am bureau chief in, in Holland. Then uh, my newspaper in Pakistan, I talk to over there. Mashallah. And, and then also I talk to the different Pakistani community over there in Pakistan. I have social work. But this kind of thing, there was in the during the day not available. I am very feel very tight. And this is my problem. And evening time, I am very, very feel tight. And my pressure to my ball, especially, and my ball, ball pain. When I talk to the, for example, I finish uh, to the uh, Namaz Isha, then I'm sitting and on the te television, I follow your program, then I say, I like to talk to him. And when they're not talk to you, then I feel very pressure and very tired. Uh, this is my problem. Please, can you help me to... So, Mother Bai, you're saying, you know, when you're out and about, when you're doing the thing you enjoy most, you're okay. Yes. But when you come home and you have nothing else to do, you get really tired Very and frustrated. Tired. How old are you, Mother Bai? That was about 52. You're 52. And any, any condition like diabetes or anything? No, no, no. I am completely fit. No blood pressure, no diabetes, no... No other problem, no crystal. Okay, Mother Bai, keep watching Umma channel. Jazakallah for your phone call. And I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Fazan Ahmed to respond to you. So, Jazakallah and thank you very much. He's a writer, mashallah, and very active life. Um, also, he mentioned about some newspapers. So, media is probably his main field. But it's just, you know, the tiredness all of a sudden, you know, when... He's done everything, and all of a sudden, it's the tiredness. What is, what is the cause of it, and what is the solution? Absolutely. Thank you, Mazabai, for obviously raising that point. And it's, it's interesting you, 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 you've touched something that actually I don't think we spoke about earlier, and that's the, the whole issue of mind over matter. Yeah. And what you've described there is that whilst you're occupied, whilst your mind is occupied, you're not necessarily feeling and recognizing, in fact, how, how tired you may be, the impact of what your activities are having on you. Um, and, and one can forget that. And the moment of reflection that you have is when you get home and you've had time to sort of consolidate what's, what's gone on and you start to feel tired and unwell and so forth. And for me, a lot of this is about ultimately you want to have a look at what are you doing through your day and similar to the food diary concept you want to keep a bit of a diary in terms of activity what are you doing and when and and take a snapshot of a typical week where you're working and you you clearly lead a very busy and productive life and having a look at where is your time amongst that and you must be selfish about this so for example through our days we have our time that we're at work there's time that we have to give to family but actually through that time where's the selfish time where's the time that you are using for yourself quite often those of us subhanallah that have the ability will spend that spare time accordingly and and, and spend it in the mosque or whatever um, but actually there has to be something else. There has to be that time where you're able to, to say, actually this half an hour, this 20 minutes is for me. And, and that needs to be you switching off, whether it's appreciating what you're eating, it's appreciating what's happened in the day or what your future holds for you, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, But you must give yourself that time. And... And the way to, to sort of allow this to, to have productivity for you is 
is to build it into your lifestyle, to say that actually that time in the day is as important as meeting all the work deadlines and the commitments I have for my family. And what's interesting is, again, we go back to our deen on this, you know, the afternoon siesta between Asr and Maghrib was always a, a beneficial and positive thing. Have a bit of a power nap. All the evidence suggests that actually having a bit of a, um, a nap in the middle of the day does give us a bit of an energy boost. But interestingly, when we talk about the mind over matter, 20% of things may actually be a, a health problem. And one of the things we'll certainly recommend is go and have a checkup, go and have, in the UK we have a concept of an MOT of a vehicle, go and do that, have a, have a health check at your, at your physician facility in Holland and, and get a bit of a status check in terms of how you are doing right now. Um, and interesting enough, when you look at Holland as a community, all the data suggests is generally you guys over there live longer, your, your well-being is much better, you're less stressed than you are in the UK. Some people argue it's about cannabis, um, other people <laughs> say it's not. Um, but the, the, there is something certainly from, from your individual point of view, is just being that little bit selfish mm. and just, just having a checkup and see how you are. There are a lot of first bicycle lanes as well in there, Absolutely. so encourage people to do that. Absolutely. Where we perhaps fail to do that, and we Picking up slightly now, so uh, but it's a very good point, I think, uh, because we all just enjoy our work and carry on without any break, without any stop. And when we come home or when the work is finished and all of a sudden, more or less, we tend to sort of have nothing else to do. But it's me time is really important, isn't it? Having time for yourself. It's absolutely, even five or ten minutes a day. Absolutely. That is really important. So very, very good advice. And Jazakallah, Mother Bai, for calling us in. And inshallah, hope you will watch us uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we do uh, Tuesday, every Tuesday. Um, the program is in, in English. And in on Sunday, uh, there is a Urdu program, Hamari Sahib. So some of the key tips we were talking about, you know, shall we get small portion, more fruit, less mango drink? Absolutely, so it has to be at the beginning, what are we putting into our bodies? And if we talk about the quantity and the quality, from a quantity terms, it's about having less and, you know, you've got your tool, your measurement tool yeah. on samosa, your body. What's wrong with samosa? It's this tiny little harmless Absolutely. So that's when we talk about the quality. So what's the quality of what we're eating? So most often things that are like the savouries, the samosas, ultimately a lot of the nutritional quality has, 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 has been lost in the way it's Why been cooked. Why tastes so good? What was the, what's the secret? So again, it's called seasoning. It's, it's called the natural fat that's within it. We as, a, we, we as people... Um, and this is for all people, not just Asians, although it may yeah. seem so at times. Um, we, we like the way that fat tastes. We like the way that sweet things taste. We like the way that sour and salt taste because as, as human beings, we're incredibly emotive. And, you know, the, the adage goes, you eat with your eyes, you eat with the aroma of food, you eat with the taste of food rather than actual hunger. Um, and ultimately, there's a challenge to us about making a healthy samosa. Um, and there'll be experts much better at cooking than I who, who need to come up with ideas for us and allow us to be experimental. We shouldn't necessarily, um, you know, throw everything from our cuisine into, um, into the bin because we've, we know when the evidence suggests Healthy turmeric, for example, immense benefits as an anti-cancer agent. We're only now recognising that, but we've, we've used it for millennia. And, and, and it's things like this that we must acknowledge that we mustn't see Western diets or European diets as, as the only thing that we can do. What we must do is look at what we're eating and look at the quality items that we, what we have 
um, and cooking methods need to be changed. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So this is almost the final uh, point. We're going to ask Dr. Fazan to give us some handy tips towards end of the show, and uh, uh, hope you're going to take uh, some notice of uh, some of the advice. And it's really, really important to make some changes, small changes. Uh, steady changes and stick to the, those changes. Don't change your mind, change your habits, but slowly, surely, you're going to be in a winning line. So, some of the key points, you know, which can be done easily. Fruit is good for us, so there's nothing wrong with it. But some people argue, you know, that now when you go for shisha bar, you can ask for apple and mango flavor Things, you know, is that for your five a day? <laughs> uh, sadly not. And, <laughs> no. and, and a lot of this comes back to ultimately our choices in terms of what we're buying. Um, what we must realise with, with fruit generally, um, whilst we have quite a lot of variety of fruit within our diets generally, one of the things we're always lacking in is vegetable. And quite often we cook the vegetable to the point where really we've lost all the buna, the, the quality. Buna. Absolutely. Sabzi, eh? Very much so. And 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 there is something for us about experimenting with some of this stuff that, you know, whilst generally English um, vegetables are fairly bland and boring, there are again from our own culture, there are loads of vegetables that actually this country is only now experiencing that actually have loads of health benefits. So within our communities, we've spoken about the bitter gorilla or yeah. gourd, as it's, as it's referred to sometimes, the bitter gourd. Ultimately, um, it's got loads of health benefits. Bindi, okra, mm -hmm. we've known for a long time. We've had it for ages. Um, it's, it's in vogue, it's something actually that, that we can have as a, as, a, as a staple that isn't much of a change and we can spice it and season it how we always want, um, but have more of it. Garlic, I believe, you know, is quite beneficial. People talk about garlic, isn't it? Very much so. I mean, garlic sadly gets a lot of rough press because of the way the odour may linger, but the, the health benefits are there to see. Yeah. For, for Just everybody. a question coming in, is it, is it true that uh, people who eat potatoes, I didn't mention chips though, but just potatoes in general, they tend to be more fat and obese? Absolutely. So the point we made earlier was around how quickly food is converted to sugar in the body and potato, the, the good old English spud, sadly converts very, very quickly. What's interesting and what is a bit of a game changer is the sweet potato that purple odd looking thing that we've had in our our own asian grocers for years and years and years is very healthy and guess what it's sweet as well go and have it and it's still okay that's it's okay it's absolutely fine um turnip you know our shulgam we've shulgam, always yeah. it's, it's sweet but it's good for us so have it carrots uh, you know, we've always had it as marabba or, or halva, yeah. but actually we've got to have it in its raw form. Um, that's much more healthy So gajari is good for you, it carrot is. is perfect. Is it good for your eyesight as well? You know, it is all saying, you know, the carrot is good for your eyesight. Very much so. So it? It, it has vitamin A in and vitamin A generally is good for our vision. Too mm. much is, is not generally good for us, but you're not going to overdose on, on carrots. So one carrot a day, two carrots a day, they're not going to cause yeah. any problems. And you know, the way we say, you know, the karelas, you know, we associate that for good for diabetes and also kidney beans. Are they good for kidneys? Is there any relations or is it just... <laughs> <laughs> so absolutely, there's, 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 I've got no evidence that says that karela juice affects sugar levels in any other way. And if it's not going to cause any harm, there's no harm yeah. in taking it. Kidney Interesting thing about kidney beans, generally the lentils and the bean families, um, the majority are very good for us and they're a good source of protein and general nutrients. Um, and, and the, you know, we've always been a culture of dal. We need to get back to that. Actually. Finally, final question, pie. Are they good for your joints and all that pie? You know, <laughs> what do you call I'd it? I'd love to say 
yes they are but they are acquired taste um, no but actually interestingly um, the soup's pretty good soup is pretty good with that note can i just say a, a big thank you uh, jazakallah for enlightening us there was a beautiful information excellent information and uh, i learned a lot and i hope a lot of our viewers have learned a lot so jazakallah for traveling all the way to manchester to come and talk to us and inshallah we'll invite you again when you are available sure. it could be next week right. <laughs> um, so this is uh, uh, dr um, Fazan Ahmed, who's a GP in Manchester, kindly told us about all the healthy stuff. Now it's time for us to reflect on that and take some practical step, steps to make some changes in 2017. With that note, can I just take a leave and thank you very much, Jazakallah, for watching. Thank you very much to all, uh, everybody who take part in uh, the program today. Thank you very much for the team behind the scene and thank you very much to Dr. Fizan Ahmed for, uh, for a wonderful uh, information and uh, key tips he has given us. With that note, thank you very much, Jazakallah, and inshallah, I'll see you again next week with a new program, with a new topic. Till then, khudafiz and take care. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>